We watched AEW Rampage October 1st, 2021. Our opener, our opener on what is theoretically, even though they denied the B show, Brian Danielson versus Nick Jackson of the Young Bucks. Wait, even though they deny it's the B show, what are you saying? I'm saying they, 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 they and it's, it's the B show, right? No, it's supposed to be an A show. That's what I'm saying. Yes. They, they're, they want, they want it to be an A show. But if we're being honest, it, well, it's, it's, it's forced to be a B show because it's a Friday night at ten yes, o'clock. Yes, but the idea is that it's not a B show. Yeah, like it may be. I don't know how to explain this. It is because of circumstances. Yes, but that doesn't mean that you have to make it a B show. They certainly are not. They're 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 trying to make it an A show, but yes. it's very difficult to be an A show at ten o'clock. And by the way, they open with this match because it is very much like Saturday night's main event. Yes. We sure. saw the two-hour rampage uh, a week ago, and I don't know if y'all saw the quarter hours or whatever, but uh, it fell hard in that second hour mm-hmm. because it's 11 o'clock to midnight. Yeah. And granted, you know, a lot of people are out on Friday nights, but some people are, like, old and we go to bed. Not me, obviously, but Craig, for example, he's usually mm-hmm. in bed before rampage even starts. So, you know, there's, uh, it's just, yeah, start with the hot match opening up the show at 10 o'clock p.m. And we got a hot match. Brian Danielson versus Nick Jackson. Great match. We had Excalibur and Taz alone on commentary. So what this match was, I will uh, summarize this, I don't know, 15 minutes or so of greatness for you. Except for one part where Danielson got thrown outside and Matt Jackson speared him and threw some kicks. Aside from that, 15, 20 seconds. The rest of this was essentially heel Brian Danielson from Ring of Honor tearing apart babyface Nick Jackson from like PWG. And it was awesome. Mm-hmm. It was Danielson grounding him, torturing him mercilessly. No mercy in the American Dragon tonight. Tied him up in knots. Never smiled. Rarely showed any emotion at all. Did the, the I have till five in a very subtle way. He didn't like get the crowd to chant along or anything. But he just beat the shit out of this dude. And every time Nick got a chance to breathe, he made his comeback. And he's flying all over the place with drop kicks and Lucha Libre and big, giant, splashy moves. And then Danielson wouldn't care. He'd kick him in the head again and torture him some more. It's going on for a long time. It's great. And uh, eventually Cutler tries to interfere. But then when Nick tries to run and kick from the apron, he misses Danielson and hits Cutler. And Nick is a suplex on the floor. He is thrown back into the ring where Brian Danielson does the tiger suplex. The uh, It's a German suplex around the dude's arms. Double overhooks, as Taz noted. A technician in the suplex, as Taz. A tiger suplex by Danielson, which he then transitions into the M- MMA elbows, his finish in Ring of Honor. Transitions from there into Calamutilation, his other finish in Ring of Honor. And Nick Jackson tapped out on his own ass. Yeah, I uh, heard a lot about this match before it actually took place, and uh, everything that I was told was correct. It was a great match. It was a Brian Danielson match as opposed to a Nick Jackson match, because a Nick Jackson match is just going to be, you know, him and Phoenix. This was him and, and Brian Danielson. But the wrestling, there was very, very good wrestling. The crowd, you could tell the crowd was tired because they had seen two hours of Dynamite and uh, they'd opened up with some dark matches, I believe. So I think they were like well over three hours into the show at this point. Ugh. But even though they were tired, I mean, they they got into the match as the match got going. But it was it was more of a struggle than it would have been if this would open up Dynamite, for example. You're right. Nick Jackson did essentially work as the babyface in this match. And every time he did a traditional Nick Jackson spot, it got a huge pop. Danielson did not so much work as a heel, but I mean, he was just, he was in control of this match. And uh, we were talking about the CM Punk match on Thursday, and I was commenting on CM Punk's kicks and how, bro, you got to start kicking these blokes. Because you're in a, a company with kickers. Mm-hmm. And holy fucking shit, did Brian Danielson kick the absolute fuck out of this poor guy. <laughs> he kicked him. And he kicked him. And he kicked him. And then Nick Jackson tries to kick Brian Danielson. And, you know, Nick Jackson's not like a, a world-renowned kickboxer. No. But he still tried to kick him as hard as he could. But didn't matter. And uh, Danielson has stolen the Ishii spot. Where you not only don't sell it. 
but you lean into each kick. Oh, yeah. And uh, that was awesome. Yes. And they had all the great near falls at the end. They they had carefully chosen big spots, and then he tapped him out, and I just thought this match was fucking great. A great pro wrestling match between two pro wrestlers. It was awesome. This was a fantastic match, and it took me back to the heyday of Nitro, where you have one guy that has a completely different style than the other, and you put them in the ring together. Say a William Regal and an Eddie Guerrero. And they just have a fantastic match, even though their styles on paper should clash. But no, it worked out perfectly, and it worked out beautifully, and I loved, loved, loved this match. So afterwards, the Elite comes down and attacks, and out comes Christian Cage and Jurassic Express to set up their eight-man tag on uh, uh, Dynamite. As soon as Cage and uh, the dinosaur hit the ring, Kenny Noballs runs for his life. Because that's the story. He's a coward. And he bails, and poor Adam Cole is left alone in the ring, and Jungle Boy locks him in the snare trap, and he's in agony. And everyone on the Elite is begging Kenny to make the save, and finally Kenny fires up, and he charges to get the, the ring, and uh, Danielson just grabs him, throws him into the bell lock, and Cole and Omega are face-to-face as they both frantically tap out, and the place is going nuts. Great, great stuff. Yeah, that was awesome because obviously, you know, Jungle Boy lost Adam Cole on Wednesday, but they they gave him his moment here. Both of the heels have an out. Well, of course we tapped out. It's not a match. We're just trying to get out of there and keep ourselves safe or whatever. I'm sure they'll do a promo about that next week. Babyface has got their big win or their big comeuppance, and everybody cheered, build up some matches. What a great opening segment on Rampage. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.